evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Wednesday Night Photo Show. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm the main photo instructor here at Dan's Camera City. With me tonight, we've got Ben. Say hey, hey everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back here at the store after our trip last week to go see a bunch of creepy crawly bugs. Uh, so, uh, hey, what's new over there in Dan's Camera City land? Oh my goodness. Um, well, we've had a really awesome uh, pattern of getting more shipments in for all sorts of exciting gear at every single level. We've also got some really amazing sales going on. So that's been really great as well. Cool. Yeah, it's good to see like some stuff is finally starting to arrive. Things are shipping and cameras are showing up. Like it yep. still seems a little thin, but like we've actually got some stuff. It's cool. It, it's still very much a mentality of you got to play to win. Um, you know, the oh, days yeah. of I just want to see it. Those are kind of done for right now um, with no real change in sight, especially through the holidays. Uh, we just came back from a national conference in uh, Denver last week or the week before that. And this is everybody's scenario across the board. But, you know, essentially we're seeing that, you know, our camera ambassadors and, you know, our studio ambassadors, all those guys that help coordinate where all these big boxes of gear go, they want to see money down on stuff, not just can i right. see it uh, they want to see that money's down and then they send it you know a piece like the nikon d7500 great camera we've seen maybe 10 in the last year Yikes. it's a camera that normally we see yeah. you know months apart yeah. kind of thing yeah, yeah. one's in and they're gone just as fast and we had a customer put a hundred dollars down towards it mm -hmm. totally refundable if he changed his mind we got it in three days so they're watching oh, really but, you know oh wow i didn't realize they were keeping that close an eye on things they're very, very wow. active. You know, our, yeah. uh, our representative for Sony, he's staying in touch with us on Instagram. He wants to see who's got stuff and he'll just DM us and say, hey, send it to this person that's not even your customer. No Things are tight. Wow. All right. So, well, cool. This stuff's shipping. So I guess tonight we wanted to make this sort of a, a quicker episode. We got quick tips for you here. Remember, if you're watching live, uh, throw your questions in the comments. We are always help, happy to answer your questions live on the show. Um, that's your well. Thank you for joining us tonight. So let's talk about keeping your images safe and what do we do to make sure that like nothing happens to them. I know I've learned some of these lessons the hard way over the years. Oh, yeah. I've lost. Yeah, it never happened to me. No, never happened. <laughs> Not once? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty much any gray hairs that don't exist on my head are definitely from that. <laughs> it, it is the scariest thing to have happen. Um, you know, we're interested in photography and capturing memories. These are things that are more irreplaceable than just about anything else potentially in your life. So especially years down the line, you can't lose these things. That's, that's so crucial. Right. And unfortunately, we've had so many horror stories over the years from clients coming in that you know just begging us like hey i don't have these pictures anymore they're gone or they all look like they've been chopped in half or they're on my camera but they don't download or my dog ate my memory card we've seen that i have seen, <laughs> I've, I've seen some of those yeah come through and then of course it's the how do i tell my family how do i tell my wife how do i tell the bride that i just photographed her wedding those are terrifying things. So mm -hmm. what we want to talk about are, you know, some things tonight that will prevent those from happening. Yes. Yeah. And I, I know that I've kind of built up a system over the years and I've changed some things and I'm always like looking for what can I do to keep myself from like, I got some vacation photos from years and years ago. I know I took this trip. I cannot for the life of me locate where those things are from yeah organization is a big aspect i mean we talk so much about taking photos and then it's now what yeah or All right. we have to and you know there's tons yeah. there's tons of it yeah so first of all i'm going to start with some stuff that i know that like i've either done myself or i know comes up in some of the classes that i teach and some of the people that i interact with and i know you talk to a bunch of people out at the counter and you see a lot of this stuff on a daily basis too and one yeah. of the ones that we both agreed on that comes up a lot is memory cards themselves are not intended to be long-term storage. And this is one of those things that you don't really know unless you know, like unless somebody tells you, it doesn't necessarily occur to you. So I don't like, this is not a judgment thing that, oh, you shouldn't yeah. be doing this and you should know better. But like, nobody tells you this stuff when you're starting out with digital photography, right? Yeah, this is probably going to be one of our most casual, quick live shows, but it's definitely one of our most important. Um, if anything else is going to save you a lot of money. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, and I, I know it's a thing that I see where people say, oh yeah, I've got all these photos on these memory cards. And when one fills up, that's fine. I just set it aside and I get a new one and I fill that one up. And that's kind of my, you know, my backup plan. I've got them on my computer, but I've also got them on this memory card and I just put it in a drawer and set it aside. Big, 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 big no, no. Yeah. Yeah. The, the unfortunate thing is that these memory cards are not designed to be long-term storage. And when I say that, what I mean is that this little thing, this little, here's an SD memory card, right? It, this works on retaining uh, an electrostatic charge in the little chip that maintains that memory. And that charge dissipates over time. And when that charge dissipates, those photos are no longer there. They can't be retrieved. There's no memory stored on the card anymore. They Scary just stuff. can't be, yeah. Yeah, and they just can't be used for long-term storage. You can take them and you can put them away. But a few years from now, you pull that thing out of the drawer and you put it in, there might not be anything on it. I've had many a person walk in all ages, you know, I mean, this, this is a, this is a no judgment kind of situation, but I've had many people walk in and they just say, Oh, this is my 2018 card. And I just go, okay. And I can tell you how often they plug it in and say, where's my stuff? I thought I had more, something's missing, or I thought they looked better than that. These are all problems from having them stored in a way that it wasn't meant to do. Not to mention, right. especially now, these memory cards are getting faster. They're getting better. They're keeping up with these newer cameras. They're expensive. You know, memory right. cards for tech is not $20. These are 60, 35 at the cheapest, $180 memory cards. I sold nothing yeah. but $180 memory cards today. You should not be buying one every single time you go do something or every year. Right, right. that's the official not paying for film every single time we want to go take pictures, right? So yeah, these are designed to be, use them, empty them off onto your computer and then reuse them, right? Yeah. They're, as long-term storage, they just don't work. And yeah, that kind of brings us into our next problem. Yeah. yeah. So that brings us into our next one, which is keep your cards healthy and happy by formatting them regularly. <laughs> you want to take this one? <laughs> <laughs> and this is like, I, I often see people and I'm, I've done it myself. I try not to, but you'll kind of go through and delete pictures off the back of your camera. Say, eh, I don't like this one. Don't like that one. And I tell Worst people to do. get out of that habit. Right. Worst thing you could uh, possibly do. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, for several yeah, reasons. That trash can. What's that? I wish oh, they yeah, would just like can setting. You can like I mean, tape right over that can, button, don't you? The analogy that we use in the store, because they're like, well, if it's there, why, why is it there? The analogy for that is when you're formatting, you're literally just wiping the earth clean. You are mm -hmm. scorched earth policying, just getting it clean, essentially as if, as if you pulled it out of the box that day. And it's designed to format and speak the language of your camera better, right? So things are more smooth. When you're individually yeah. deleting stuff, it's not truly gone. You're essentially just taking them and shoving them through a big wood chepper. And now all those little bits are everywhere inside of your car digitally, so to speak. You do that enough th times, Things are going to get clogged up. They're going to get confused. And that's where corruption occurs. And that's when we go, oh, no. Exactly. And we've lost our right, stuff. Right. Like any time that very often I like that's going to cause more problems than it will. So, like it's probably better now than it used to be. Cameras have gotten better. Right. And they're more reliable than they used to be. But yep. uh, the onesie twosie deleting thing is one of the things that can contribute to weird little file system errors building up over time. Right? Exactly. And then you get some weird little error like, hey, there's a problem with this memory card. You're going to have to reformat it. Well, I don't want to reformat it while I've got pictures on it. So now I've got to take it home and I've got to plug it into the computer. I'm going to pull everything off of it and then I've got to reformat it. And hopefully I had another memory card with me while I was out shooting. Be prepared. I was stuck, right? You know, don't keep buying them, but definitely have one or two laying around. If it's the summer and I'm busy, 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 I just keep one in my wallet just as a spare. Just you know, extra. just to prevent that from happening. Just in case. Yeah, yeah and it saved me many times. But when you reformat that card, it wipes everything right down to the file system level. It rebuilds the file system on the memory card. And those weird little crufty errors don't have a chance to build up over time. So what I recommend everybody does is take your stuff off your card, pull it into your computer, take the memory cards, throw it back in the camera, go into the menu and format it. If you haven't found that menu option, we can show you where that is and how that works. I just had to, it's 
It's just, a, it's a quick little thing that we can show you how to do, reformat that memory card for smooth sailing with your memory cards. Yeah, pretty much every camera today, it's the exact same term. It's usually gonna be on the, the toolbox or the settings. You kind of usually have to dig for it. They don't right, want you to find- that little wrench it. menu or something? They don't want you yeah. to find it by accident and it's gonna say format. It's gonna be the exact same term on every single camera. You know what I did to uh, keep from having to dig through three levels deep in my menus was I threw it on my little favorites menu so that it's mm. on there and I can just format my menu with kind of like click into that and it's one click and done. Yeah, on, on a lot of cameras that have, you know, some customizability on where to find stuff, you can get it a little faster up into there. And it's not like you can accidentally hit it because on every single camera, if you hit format, it's going to say, are you sure? Are you sure? Right. Yeah. There is a, there is a fail safe put in. So yep. the fear of I don't want to accidentally delete things, that's really not a thing. But you do want to make sure that you're, you know, going towards that habit. We tell people the best situation is going to be you know, yes, life gets in the way, but what you should really aspire to, you go out, you shoot for that day, that day, that night, or maybe that morning, just maybe, you get everything downloaded onto a computer or however you're preserving them on long-term storage and then wiping it fresh. I do see we have a question though from Ruth Miller. So okay. that's a, let me uh, read that. So how about keeping the memory card in camera? Is it going to ruin the camera? That's not a thing. I may need nope. a new one. Guess I list my photos. Guess I lost my photos. Well, I'm really sorry that that happened, Ruth. So you leaving a memory card in a camera, that that's not a thing. It, you know, there is no battery acid. It's not like something that we need to worry about. But if you're just leaving them in the camera, again, it's not long-term storage. Right. right. Like I always have a memory card in the camera, so it's ready to go. I can just pick it up and start shooting. So I leave a memory card in there. Absolutely. Yes, I'm not leaving it in there for like, weeks and weeks like when i'm done with a day of shooting then it's yeah pull it out get the stuff off of it yeah you know i mean life gets busy we you know we get just sidetracked by stuff you know and it's it's it can be a chore it can be a thing sure this is one of those brushing your teeth kind of things you know there's no way to <laughs> you know, do it halfway there's no way to kind of get around it there's no cheat but it's so important because just got to if it goes wrong it can be one of the most truly frustrating and heartbreaking things we hope that nobody ever has to deal with. And unfortunately we do see it a bit um, mm -hmm. here. We have had quite a few scenarios where photos are never going to be gotten again. You can't ask the bride and groom to kiss again. Um, you know, you, you can't have that first birthday party again. Right. It's, it's a basic, basic thing, but it only becomes really important when something goes wrong. Right. All right. Another memory card thing make sure you pull out your memory cards the right way. And this is a thing that I see, especially in like my Lightroom and my Photoshop classes, right? We know well enough to like, when I'm gonna pull my memory card out of my camera, I'm gonna turn it off first. And once it's off, then I'm gonna open the card door and I'm gonna pull my memory card out. I'm never ever gonna remove the memory card while the camera's on, right? Oops. We all kind of know that part. I mean, I've, I've done it by accident. Like you, I'm not the memory card out like, oh crap, Oops, I left the memory card, I left the camera on. Um, but I'm pretty consistent about that part. You've got good habits with that. It, that is a really, really big thing though. Um, you are so but, welcome, Karen. And if you have questions, please ask. But it is so, so crucial. You gotta turn that camera off. It's right. pretty, the analogy just to drive that home, that's like getting out of the car and you're still in drive. It, right. It's, it's <laughs> a bad, bad move. Right. But the other part of that that I see in my classes is people who are like, I know they're great about like, turn the memory, turn the camera off, then pull the memory card, but they'll put it into their computer and then just yank the memory card back out without ejecting the memory card. And that is the same thing. It is just as bad. So you have to make sure to, on Mac, you take the memory card and you drag it to the trash and it ejects the card or on Windows, yeah. go down to that little taskbar and you go safely remove hardware, remove your memory card. And that says, now you may safely remove the memory card. That's also, just as no, important, right? It's so, so crucial. I mean, that's, we're all guilty of that, but it is one of those things. We're doing all these things to invite not corruption into our lives, but Along those same lines, something that we see a lot of people do is they will format the card in the computer. This isn't something that is oh, as yeah. common. 
do not, for the love of everything you hold dear, especially those photos, do not allow your computer, and it'll ask you, it won't do it automatically, do not let your computer format the card for you. Yeah, that's right. You only yeah, do I that. Format the card. You're going to dump all your photos over. You're going to move that still full card on back onto your camera, and you're going to format in camera. Mm -hmm. That is the only yeah, way to do this, period. Yep. No other way is safe for that. <laughs> yeah. Rant All right, over. my last memory card <laughs> tip. <laughs> my last memory card tip would be keep your memory cards protected. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed to admit how long I was rolling around with all my memory cards in those little plastic cases they come with rattling around in the bottom of my camera. Yeah, keep making faces at me. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> or loose in the little pouch that's in there. That hurts. Um, <laughs> so what I did was I got myself the little memory card wallet. This one's from Think Tank and it's a little Velcro jobby and it keeps them all organized. Um, yeah. I actually, this one's several years old. Uh, but this keeps everything organized and in one place. And I, the other thing that I do is I know that like when I am out taking pictures, I know that this one is blank because the little label is facing forward. If I pull yes. it out of my camera and it's full, I flip it around backward and stick it back in there. If I don't see the little label on this side, like I can see the numbers on this one, but I can't see that one. I know that yep. that one is one that I've already filled up and I'm moving yep. on to the next Super one. Crucial thing. I, I, I do the exact same thing. You have kind of the wallet set up. I have the hard clamshell where each has its own rubberized area. I flip yeah. them over. Exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, that's what Apple went on shoots. Um, yeah, this one, I, I, this, I, was my, this was my quality of life upgrade right here. Big, big yeah. difference. Because that guy's also, you know, a little bit more water and dirt tight. And, you know, yeah, it's got it, this, like, there's the, the rubber gasket around here. So it's watertight. This one is also terrier proof. Uh, I've seen memory cards oh. come in for camera card recovery that got teeth marks in them because uh, somebody's dog got a hold of the memory card. And this is like the hard case kind of prevents that a little. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> these, these are the things that keep me up at night and, you know, have me wake up <laughs> with a cold sweat at two in the morning. <laughs> All right. So I think that about covers it for memory card stuff. You got any more memory card stuff? I think we're pretty Yeah, good. absolutely. So the big thing is your memory cards are only going to go in one way. If it doesn't oh, go in right. smoothly, stop. Yes. Yeah, flip it around. I can't oh. tell you how many times that the card's been perfectly fine and somebody either damaged the card, which is terrible, or worse, they damaged the card reader in the camera and now you have a dead camera on your hands, potentially. Oh, stop. Had somebody come out on one of our photo albums? No. Yeah. Those are the things that fill us with dread. Yeah. If you still have a camera that takes compact flash cards, this is a little bit more of a concern for you guys because that wasn't as clearly laid out. If yeah. any of those pins bend or break, you can push those little metal pins back into the camera and you can literally fry your camera. We've seen it. I had somebody out many on times. one of our photo expeditions one time and like just got a brand new big memory card. We are an hour from home out on location and we... It, forced the memory card in and bent one of those pins. And now she was just stuck. The memory card doesn't work. Camera doesn't work. Don't, don't, work. don't force things. Um, I mean, that's just a general life rule. You never don't have it. to force it going in there. That's actually part of why um, cameras got away from the compact flash design with those pin holes and went yeah. to SD, which actually stands for secure digital. Good marketing. Mm -hmm. But with them, instead of a pin hole design, it's slots over each other. So mm -hmm. that kind of damage was a little less. We're seeing some newer technologies where things are a little tougher. We also have memory cards made that are waterproof, you know, single pieces of plastic instead of two sandwiched together. There's a yeah. video on our Facebook and Instagram where I found one in my dryer from early May this year. It went through the wash. <laughs> I've done that before. I, I sent one. It was in the pants pocket. Missing. I've done it yeah. before too. <laughs> I didn't even know it was missing. Thankfully, my camera shoots two cards at a time if I want. Everything was still safe. I didn't realize that this was gone. Everything was still there, but mm -hmm. that build quality is so well worth the, you know, five extra dollars. So yep. you can get waterproof versions of your cards. They're just built better to prevent damage, not only mm -hmm. corruption. Um, but as far as memory cards, that's kind of the, the main gist of it. You know, don't yeah. force anything, format everything, treat them with care, keep them organized, and they are not long-term storage. And I mean, if it's more than a week, you should be getting itchy. <laughs> and that's aspire to those habits. Life gets in right. the way, but aspire to those habits. You will be so much safer.
And that's the All thing, right. right? Like make it a habit. So it's not really something you have to think about. This is just what you do. And it, you can kind it of run on autopilot. It gets easy once you're caught up. Yeah. All right. So my big one is use photo library software. Uh, and I don't care if it's like Lightroom. We teach classes on Lightroom, love Lightroom. Yep. Everything I do runs through Lightroom. Uh, but there are other good options out there. You can use, if you're on a Mac, Photos comes with your Mac and it's pretty good photo it's gotten organizing better. software. It's gotten, it's gotten real good, right? It's great for organizing your stuff on Windows. There's a Photos app and it can organize all your stuff. But the way I like to, the analogy I use is thinking about like, Okay, back when we used floppy disks, y'all out there remember floppy disks, right? Like you had three oh, word not. processing files, <laughs> you had three <laughs> word processing files on a floppy disk. And that's fine. Like you can keep track of that. But I have something like 65,000 photos in one of my Lightroom catalogs right now. And I cannot manage files and folders to keep track of where all those things go. That's how I lost those vacation photos that I'm talking about. Like they were on a folder somewhere and I'm not sure where they went. And this was back before I was using Lightroom on a regular basis before we really had those photo library applications. Um, and relying on the computer to keep track of your stuff rather than relying on yourself to keep track of stuff. Well, this is the folder where I put this thing. And then on this year, I put this folder in this thing. It's just too much stuff, right? We've got these exactly. library applications now that make it so much easier to manage all those things and the computer can automate that stuff for you yep and it's you know, some much even much even less likely to enough. use stuff i mean some of them are even intelligent enough speaking of organization we've blown many a person's mind in here with this um i don't know if windows does anything similar to this but your photos are stored in there you can just say show me photos from this date and it'll just do it or yeah. show me photos of dogs that i've taken it'll pull yes. as many dogs as it, as it thinks it sees. Um, yeah, it's really good. Cool. You're trying to you know, post cute photos of people's birthday and you're like, show me kids, I'll pull up my nephew. Those are you know, great things that are an added benefit because it makes navigating your photos later so much more pleasant. It's not a chore. Yes. Right, right. Like even if I've, I know I've got the photo somewhere on my hard drive, but if it's one of 30,000 photos somewhere in a file structure, it almost might as well be lost if I don't have a library tool to manage that stuff and pull up the stuff that I'm looking for once I've got years and years of photos to go back through. Yeah, the, the big thing, especially when you're getting started or if you're trying to fix maybe, you know, your computer's a mess with this kind of stuff where you're like my mom who just has everything on her desktop and it makes me run out of her computer room with fear is you need to ask yourself, if I fall off the face of the earth or if I get hit by a bus tomorrow and wake up, am I gonna be able to logically figure out how to find my stuff? Using software or not, you know, if you're just an agent of chaos and you don't wanna pay 10 bucks <laughs> a month to have your life simplified, having something built in that you can consistently follow with logic from year to year, month to month, it's a really, really helpful thing because three years goes by really fast and all of a sudden someone says, Hey, you know, do you have that such and such photo where you say, you know, I really wanted to do something in that dining room and you can't find that one bloody photo. You will make your life crazy. Yeah. And these are like, they're free. They're like you, the windows thing is free. It comes with your computer. The, the Apple yeah. thing is free. It comes with your computer, right? Like you don't necessarily have to do the whole Lightroom thing. Lightroom is 10 bucks a month now though. And it's super so powerful. Good. It's always up to date. I mean, that's the big thing. A lot of people get hung up on it's 10 bucks a month. It's software. I don't own it. Here's the thing. You're used to this now. Five, six years ago, Lightroom, Adobe, all that stuff used to be really expensive. It was not in the hands of everyday users at every skill level. It was very expensive. And then, and Karen, we will talk about cloud next. Yep. And then anything that you bought new or you bought a new computer or they made an update, sorry, buy it again. Mwahaha. And mathematically, it didn't really work out in your favor. Now, mm -hmm. you have the same thing on multiple devices. A lot of these offer something great for your phone, too. You know, this mm -hmm. isn't just for camera photos, this is for phone photos, too. And everything's up to date always. There's a lot of benefits yeah. to that. So, 10 bucks, you're getting way more value. I mean, how much are we all spending on Netflix? <laughs> this is a lot more important than, you know, my well, favorite show. And and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. And, well, anyway. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. We, we won't sweat the details. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question though, Karen. Is one cloud-based library better than the others? Um, they're all 
pretty Better okay. Well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, like, um, I've, I've got a little bit of cloud storage in a bunch of different places. I don't use a ton of cloud storage because I take so many photos. I have most of my storage on my computer rather than exclusively in the cloud. I don't have yeah. everything in the cloud, just little bits and pieces that I want to share and that I want to make sure I post up there. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll throw stuff into there that's just like family stuff or things I want to share with people conveniently um, or mm -hmm. just a extra copy of something, um, you know, like our wedding album or what have you. Um, but it's it's not the eggs in one basket. Clouds are great. You know, if just lightning strikes your house, you can walk over to your neighbor's house and everything that you've stored there is there. But right. with storing your stuff, it's only one of the places that you should be storing. There is no end all be all. That being said, and that's Google's Photos is good. Amazon does a nice one too. There are some more pro ones. I think Scott, you can kind of elaborate on those. I've got like Apple's deal because like, you know, you yeah. I get Apple stuff. So you take a picture and it just shows up kind of like Google does. You just take the picture yeah. and it shows up in the cloud thing and it all syncs up. Um, I actually use Adobe's cloud stuff a little bit because it it is what allows me to sync up photos in Lightroom between my desktop computer and my phone and they shuffle back and forth. Right. And yeah, we use that with a now. lot of uh, behind the scenes projects just for the store, not even just for photos, but um, a lot of our marketing, all those graphics, we're collaborating with other people. So a cloud can also just be a great way to have other people contribute so everybody can share. Yeah, yeah, right. And as far as which one, like I've, I haven't really had a bad experience with any of them. I know Adobe suffered some data loss. What was it about a year ago now? There was that cloud outage and they lost some data, but um, and that just goes to, show like that can happen to anybody. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's really just a matter of which one has the features and pricing on a package that's going to appeal to you for the specific thing that you want to do with it. Yeah. I a lot of them really will have some sort of free level. And then after that, they'll probably be, you know, for a certain amount of storage, we'll give you X amount for this amount of month. But that leads us right into having a backup plan. And yep. cloud storage can figure into that. But for me, it's not the whole story. I always tell people to get a big external drive and just use it for backup exclusively. You're not going to store anything else on it. It is your backup drive. And it should be large enough to hold all of your other stuff. Right? Like yep. I've got I'm, I'm my little laptop here. It doesn't have a ton of internal storage. So I also use external hard drives. Um, but my backup drive is big enough to hold all of that stuff put together. I just add up the capacity of all my things and then I get a backup drive that is bigger than all of them put together. Yep. But backup is only really backup if it is automated and happens consistently in the background and you don't have to think about it. I know people who have the backup drive, oh, I've got some stuff on my backup drive and you know, every so often I take my folders and I move them over to there. That's an accident waiting to happen. There is now backup software, intelligent backup software built into Macintosh and built into Windows that will just take care of it for you in the background. And I highly recommend setting that stuff up. On Windows, yep. it's called file history. On the Mac, it's called time machine. It's the best. I'm on the Mac and it's the best. It's so good. Um, time machine has saved my bacon on multiple occasions. Um, and same deal yep. on Windows, file history, it's good stuff. Right. You set it up, you say, this is my backup drive. Back up my entire system to that drive. Do it consistently in the background, and I don't have to think about it. It just happens. And again, this is a laptop, right? So it happens when I am connected to that drive. When I'm at my desk, I'm always plugged into like my other stuff. And whenever it's connected, it's doing backup. Looks like we lost Ben. Hopefully, we'll get him back. But I can tell you from experience that this backup is a great thing to have. I once had problems with my hard drive on my main computer to the point where it wasn't just missing photos, but like the computer didn't work right. I needed to reformat the hard drive and start over. Now I got to reformat. I got to reinstall all my applications. I got to get my documents back and all that stuff. And say, so, hey, he's back. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds and so like with that failure, all I did was I just wiped my hard drive and I said, restore from my last backup. And an hour later, I was back up and run with all my stuff, all my applications, all my photos were back. And I don't have to worry about it. It is yep. excellent stuff. Please, if you, t if you do nothing else with the information we give you tonight, 
start looking at your backup plan. Go out, get yourself a nice big hard drive that is going to be nothing but backup and set that backup up for yourself. It's real easy. If you want a hand with it, we can talk you through it. Like, you know, stop by with your laptop and I'll show you how to set up your little time machine backup or whatever it is you need to do. But please take a look at that backup plan. Yeah, th th this is very much one of those talks. This is not a sales thing at all. I mean, we don't even sell external hard drives. Um, you know, obviously we do private classes, but we really want to make sure that everybody's safe with their stuff. Um, you know, you can go to any tech store. You can go to you know anywhere online. External hard drives are getting more and more affordable by the year. Um, mm -hmm. The other type is the SSDs that stands for solid state. That means there's no moving parts. So if your right. cat knocks it off the counter, there's a much better chance it'll be fine. Normal external hard drives like no impact whatsoever. There's a lot moving, there's magnets. So you can kind of mix and match if you want to travel with your stuff. I keep a small one with me. It was about $180 for a two terabyte now. Mm -hmm. There's great sales to watch out for those, but those are really, really important. Some good yeah. brands, if you're curious about that. Seagate is great. Western Digital is great. Um, a lot of people like Lacy or Lacy, however you want to describe it. This does some good stuff as well. Um, if you want to take things farther, and if you're somebody that wants to back up your stuff in the field without a computer, there are some automated SD oh, yeah. drives put it into such as Narbox, and that's uh, mm. NAR as in G-N-A-R as in gnarly because they make all this will be crush proof and waterproof so if you're somebody that's outdoorsy that's a great one but there are a lot of different levels of storage but it is one of those things some of them might be a little bit more expensive than others ask those questions we can help walk you through that part too Ask the people that are selling them. They'll be even, you know, possibly more knowledgeable about it. But, yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> not about people, but hey, we're the experts. Um, <laughs> but it is one of those things you need to ask yourself, you know, am I okay with losing all of my grandson's photos? Right, right. And that's a real good point about the SSDs. Like, this is a spinning hard drive, right? This is a, a little hard drive that, and this is one that I keep in my laptop bag. I travel with this one because the internal drive on my hard drive on my laptop isn't huge, right? So this is where my photos live. When I import stuff, they go to here. This I'm probably going to replace the next time I get a hard drive. This I'm going to replace with SSD because it's rattling around in my laptop bag. And like you said, these don't like being banged around because they got moving I, parts. I had one go on me and it was, I don't even know what I'm missing. I mean, this was years ago, but that was a very painful lesson to learn. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, get and a little case for these to kind of protect them yeah. and keep them from getting jostled around. That's also a good idea. But yeah. when this gets replaced, it's getting replaced with an SSD. They don't have any moving parts in them. They're faster. Uh, they are pricier, though. So for that big, big 8 terabyte hard drive that I'm using for backup, that's a spinning drive. Right? That's a, yeah. that's a traditional hard drive. But I don't have to worry about it because that's the one that's always just sitting on my desk. It's just backup. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't move. That's fine. And for eight terabytes, which is massive, massive amounts. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you on like a $3,000 laptop and it's got a terabyte of storage. That's eight mm -hmm. of this laptop. And that was what, 200 bucks? Uh, you know that, I got it on sale. So I it, think it was like 180. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the spinning hard drives have the advantage of being cheaper, right? Especially when you get up to large, large capacities. Just don't bang them around at all. They sit on the desk and that's it. If you want to be able to travel with your stuff, if you're just worried about dropping them, if you have kids in the house, pets in the house, I'm dead serious about the cat thing. Cats are <laughs> agents of chaos right. and they like to knock stuff off the tables. There's too many YouTube videos saying that. <laughs> But if you're worried about impact in any way, and I mean just dropping it down with the same force that you would drop your keys and phone on your out table when you get home from work, if you're worried about that kind of force being introduced, you should be buying solid state drives, SSDs. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Ooh, well, we're talking yeah. about huge backup. What is grade? Fill them in on that. So here's a little... This is a, a real common misconception. RAID is not backup. And RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. A RAID is several hard drives glommed together so it looks to your computer like one big hard drive. 
And the neat thing about RAID is you can say, take five hard drives and put them together either in what's called a RAID enclosure, which is a box that just holds hard drives and plugs into your computer. Or if you're using a, a big tower type computer, you can get what's called a RAID controller, which is a card that goes in your computer and connects to multiple hard drives that sit inside your computer. Most common these days is the external RAID box, right? It either plugs in your computer or it might be what's called network attached storage, NAS, right? Either way, it's a bunch of hard drives glommed together in a box, <coughs> excuse me, and it's doing some funny stuff behind the scenes. So to your computer, it appears to be one huge hard drive. And the neat thing about RAID is that it can do something called striping, where you take, say, five hard drives and put them in a box and RAID them together in such a way that the total capacity is four of those hard drives put together. One of those hard drives you don't get the actual capacity of, but instead it's doing something called striping where it's writing the data across all those disks in such a way that if any one of those disks dies, you can pop it out of there, replace it, and rebuild the RAID so that all that data is then striped back across those disks. This is where that redundancy thing comes in. So what RAID does is it protects you from hardware failure. One okay. of those drives dies, you can pop it out of there, throw a new one in, rebuild the RAID, and you're good to go. You haven't actually lost any data. So how is that not a backup, though? Right. So that sounds a little like backup, right? Like if a drive dies, I can throw no one in. I haven't lost any data. What happens if you delete something by accident? If you delete something by accident, it's gone off all five drives. If a file goes corrupt, it's gone off all five drives. It's corrupted across all five of them. Mm. So it doesn't really do backup. It protects you from hardware failure, and that's a great thing, but it's still not backup. So if your laptop dies, or the cat, I, I think we just have a proverbial cat, sure. um, you know, spills iced tea on your laptop, or you know, so your dog eats it, you can you know hook up to those raids, and everything will be there. But if something goes wrong with the file, not your physical thing. You're in, you're in trouble. Right, you're still in trouble there. So what you can do is you can set up that RAID and use your RAID as your backup drive. That's a great way to put together, like it is my backup and it is RAID so I can throw together a huge amount of storage if you've got tons and tons of files, right? That's not a terrible idea, right? But RAID itself is not backup exclusively. You need, you still need that backup plan. Okay. And to the cloud question, online backup is good too. And this is a thing that we talk about in IT, right? Is that like data that only exists in one place might as well not exist. You gotta have that backup, but to have a really good backup system, you also wanna have duplicate data stored offsite and online backup is a good way to do that. How great would it have been if the library of Alexandria had backups? Right, yeah, this is the thing, right? Like I've got my backup drive on my desktop, Right, but if my house burns down, I've lost both my hard drive and my backup drive. The offsite backup is for like absolutely catastrophic failure. Fire, flood, a meteor comes down through your roof and hits your desk. And I don't, something, anything like that that could take out both at the same time. Theft, right? Somebody breaks in and steals your computer stuff. Offsite backup means that all your stuff is still someplace else. There are a couple of good services that are, and this is, this is not just cloud storage where I've got my photos and I'm sticking them someplace. This again is a true backup system. Something like Carbonite or Backblaze, they're both good options for offsite backup. And it's the same kind of thing that you've got with Time Machine or you've got with file history where it's just backing up your entire system and it's doing it constantly in the background. Yeah, those are also great for just professionals in general. So even if you're tuning in and you're thinking, could any of this stuff be used with like my business or anything like that? Carbonite, Backblaze, those are things that just protect you in general. And unfortunately, right. we, like, you know how you need to hang on to those tax records for seven years? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now, the caveat there is that I wouldn't want online backup to be my only backup because it takes forever to do that first initial backup. You got to push all that data out over the internet and yep. the full recovery takes just as long. Right. So I want my first line of defense to be my, my in-house on my desk backup. Yep. You know, I mean, the big takeaway from all of this is don't put all of your eggs in one basket. That's the biggest yeah. thing. You know, 
more copies of stuff you have in different places independent from the other, the better. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just take one of these SSDs and just chuck them in a fireproof safe. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. there's always another level that you can take this. Of course, we're talking, you know, up to the nth degree of nutso. I mean, I, I shoot <laughs> weddings professionally. Those are some of the most important photos that people will have in their lives ever. Mm -hmm. I had brides call me three years later and say, the cat, actually that time it literally <laughs> was the cat. It's probably why I keep saying that, spilled my kid's drink onto my computer. We never printed them, ah. <laughs> which is also it's, its own thing. We never uh -huh. printed them. Do you still have them? I said, sure, give me a couple hours. I, I think I talked her off of a ledge, but <laughs> how great would it be to have that for yourself? Yeah. You know, when right, my wedding photos, you're, you're going to look back on those hopefully like 50 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff is irreplaceable. Once it's gone, you're not going to get those moments back either professionally or just emotionally, you know, with family stuff. It's so, so, so important. And it and can be easy. About, uh, yeah. But expect to buy more storage, I think, is this is the one that's just like, don't be surprised that this is how this is going to work. Um, I got some examples here. Uh, let's see this one. Here's one of my old my old desktop hard drives. I pulled this one out just for the show. Uh, oh, this? <laughs> I think this might be an 80 gigabyte hard drive. I got memory cards bigger than this now. But check this out. See them? Those are what's called firewire ports. When's the last time you saw firewire ports? Technology changes like anything else. Technology changes, right? So what what I had to do was like one of these days. I'm not going to hang on to this drive forever and plan that this is just going to go in a drawer and my photos are going to be on here. When I get a new drive, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an old drive that I'm going to retire and I'm going to pull the photos off of this and put it on the new drive. Old formats are going to go obsolete one of these days, or the you're just going to succumb to bit rot. Like this is just going to demagnetize itself sitting in a drawer after so many years. And I'm not going to pull the data off of this thing. So expect that you're going to migrate your data forward onto whatever the new thing is. So the first it's thing I'm doing like is I'm taking old movies. We have people coming in all the time, just transferring their old movies. It's the same yeah. concept, like right. anything else like, in our life. I don't have a VHS deck anymore. Nope. Not like, but so I've got these old home movies. I got to bring them in and transfer them. I'm going to be able to get them on some digital thing that I'm going to be able to move to a hard drive and be able to migrate to some other thing. But it's an ever, it's an ongoing process, right? Like this, this eight terabyte hard drive seems huge right now, but my camera now shoots 4k video and I can record that as cinema raw. That's a big data stream. I'm, you know, my needs for data keep getting bigger. Hard drives keep getting bigger. One day, that's not going to seem so big anymore. And I'm going to take that stuff and I'm going to migrate it to the next thing. Yeah, just pictures and videos, you know, in general from our phones, from anything. I mean, it's it's always getting right. bigger. It's always getting better. We like better quality. Better quality means bigger file. Bigger file means more storage. It's a natural arms race. Yeah, but you're going to take those old drives and move that data to the new drive. And that old drive is just putting it out the pasture. It's just... That one's done. We're not done using that one anymore. Okay. So uh, what else do we have on, on this list be, uh, besides buy extra storage? Well, the biggest surefire way to make sure that you've got your photos, again, like 50 years from now, is the one that you already mentioned. Print your photos. Yep. That's the thing. Like old hard drives, you're not going to be able to record, recover data from this 20, 30 years from now. You, you just can't. It's not going to, like, this little connector won't exist anymore. I've got hard drives here that are so old, I don't have a computer that I can read anything off of them anymore. And that's um, a pain. Yeah. And formats go obsolete. And, like, I don't know. Like, are my nieces and nephews going to look through my old hard drives? No, they're going to go look your photos. Right. You're going to look through photos. Like, shoe boxes of old photos are the things that you pull out at the holidays and pass them around. Or, you know, like, those are the things that hang around for a good long time. It really is the best way to ensure you got some longevity to these pictures. If you've got something that's important, 
print them. Even if they just sit in the shoebox on the shelf and they only come out at the holidays or when, hey, remember this picture from when you were a little kid or when your kid was a little kid, right? Those those things, like having the actual tangible picture. Print, printing is not cool. ones and you zeros. Know, a lot of people consider that as, oh, everything's digital today. Yes, it is. However, printing in its relevancy is almost more important because we're relying on these things that can fail. We don't yeah. know what's going to exist three generations from now as far as just life, right? We know from looking back, photos last. Printing is cheaper than it has ever been. There are tons of different ways to send, save money. It is easier to order your photos. We can mail them back to you. And it costs you nothing to throw them in a Rubbermaid bin and just shove them in a closet. I've yeah. got photos around here. That's like I'm the, the photo right. guy in the family, right? So some of the old stuff has made its way to me. And I've got photos back here from my great grandmother's wedding. I, a hard drive is not going to last that long. It's just not. Nope. But how priceless are those photos? Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. They're everywhere. Well, I think if nobody else has any other kind of questions, I mean, that, that's kind of our, our main TED talk on this. Um, any other closing yeah, points? Yeah. Boy, if I just, if this is the thing about printing photos, I've got to kind of make it a habit. I've got to have a project, right? I've got mm -hmm. it. So I got to trick myself into it. Um, cause otherwise like I've got all these photos and I had somebody in one of my classes last week ask me, okay, so what do you do with your photos? And I'm like, um, uh, gosh, we have this great <laughs> app this for our smartphones that we can order from that. And even if we don't like dealing with our smartphones, there's this place I can go to it. It's the largest camera store in the state and they can help me with it. <laughs> they can print my photos. <laughs> right. But I gotta like, I gotta make it a habit to say, okay, these that I marked as favorites, I'm going to print them in a batch. One of the things that I'd done is, um, like I got into the habit of taking a bunch of photos of my nephew at the end of the year and printing them and giving them to my sister. Those are prints that will exist. And like, that's a thing that I do. So that's a habit that I'm kind of in doing that thing. And so like, even if you have to trick yourself into doing it by saying, oh, I'm going to print these as a gift and I'm going to give them to somebody. Like sometimes it's easier for me to do stuff for other people than to do my own thing. Like I spend time building everybody else's website and never actually work on my own. Um, if that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see you making that face. If that's you, then maybe, I don't know, find a way to make yourself do it so that you will actually like take care of getting those prints done, but find a way to actually kind of like put it on your calendar. And this is my making prints day, or you got a rainy afternoon and you're not doing anything like keep it safe, make it, make it a to do. Yeah. Alrighty. Alrighty. All right. Well, thanks for joining. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, if you have any other questions, call, DM us, um, you know, leave something in the comments. If you're watching this not live, I will happily answer it. No problem there. For you know sure. how connected we are. But yeah. uh, hey, you're welcome, Mr. Bellas. But uh, <laughs> any uh, other questions, you just leave them in the comments and have a great night. Yeah, we will be back next time. We're off next week, but we will be back with Phil for our first show of October. We'll be talking about getting ready for some great fall foliage photos. We're coming into fall. I'm starting to see some color out there, and we will be talking about some great landscape and fall tips. Uh, can't wait to see you then. And until then, go take pictures, print some stuff, make sure your stuff is safe. Oh, you're welcome. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. We were able to answer some questions. The stuff is like, we don't spend a lot of time talking about it because kind of, I feel like it's, sometimes it's kind of the boring stuff, but it is super important. So it's like brushing your teeth, man, but it is just as crucial. Ruth, what are, what are your questions about classes? Of course we have classes. What about classes? Got a bunch of classes coming up. I've got some Lightroom classes. There's a Lightroom class coming up on the calendar. If you're interested in that organization stuff and you're, kind of getting into the like, okay, I'm going to use Lightroom as my photo library. There is an intro to Lightroom class coming up on the calendar. Check out our website, go to uh, our classes page and uh, we can hook you up there. Oh, you're welcome, Enzo. And if you just have questions about like, okay, obviously my laptop's a mess. How do I clean it up and get started with those? That is where a private class is going to be the most crucial thing. You coming in for somebody on exactly that. and just hanging out 
and getting everything cleaned up and organized and we can sit next to you. It's a no judgment thing. We want you to be successful and safe with this stuff. So we don't have to feel embarrassed if that's a thing. Just book a private class with us on our website. You can do a half hour, an hour, up to 90 minutes. We'll get you sorted out. Ruth, I will stick a link to that upcoming Lightroom class in the in the uh, in the comments here for you below on the Facebook comments. All right. All righty. Well, okay. have a great night, Scott. I am out of here. All right. We'll see you later. We'll be back in two weeks. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good night.